Ahem. Systems online. Forward and rear hover coils look stable. Initiating overdrive kickstart now. Miss Ashley, perhaps it'd be prudent to seek cover this time. Previous results dictate a building chance of hazard. Hazard schmazard. Come on, sweetheart, let's go! Vamano, vamano! And damn. <sighs> That's the kind of get up and go that never got anywhere. Go ahead and say that five times fast. <laughs> ah, all right, Billy. Clock and overdrive failure for me. Second test run, 1.17 p.m. Not prepared to declare a time of death for her yet. Well, if we're going to do this, then I might as well introduce myself. God knows nobody else is likely to do so. I'm Billy, Junktown's friendly resident robot head on a stick. Technically, I would have, in a previous life, been classified as one unit in a line of versatile intermediary BLE3 advocacy assistants. Hence the inspiration for the name, as it were. <sighs> I do suppose it could be worse. I'd even like to think I've been a rather good sport about it all. Yes, let none say that Billy is without both patience and a sense of humour. The latter being a quirk that would have surely led to a recall in my previous vocation. To hell with it, I do say. Buyer beware. You can't return me now. Robots rule the world, after all. Stupid robots, to be sure. But robots nonetheless. <laughs> There's that sense of humour again. All jokes aside, those glorified zombies zappers really do give the rest of us a bad name. Despite our rather poor representation, robots weren't always the enemies of humanity. Mm, you know... Billy, did you get that? Yes, yes, madam, my apologies. It seems I was caught up in my thoughts, as it were. I'd say that I was up in my head again, but, well, when am I not, I suppose? <laughs> I promise, we'll scav you a body. Somehow or somewhere, it's just... It's been 200 years and this is Arizona. If it's not piled up in the scrapyard by now, then it's basically buried treasure without a map. <sighs> I'm starting to give up hope. I'm afraid you've misinterpreted my current attempt at making light of this fantastically unique situation I find myself in. I am and continue to be thankful for my very existence. Truly, who needs a body when you can have your head impaled atop this battered tent pole? Or maybe we can upgrade to a piece of rusty rebar or whatever you find laying around in the dirt. A more noble presentation I can scarcely imagine while I patiently wait for a body that will- Billy! Okay, I get it. I really do. It's just that it was a miracle I even got you running to begin with. The sand here gets into everything. And what you're mounted to, it's not a tent pole or a piece of rebar, you bucket. That's exactly half of an authentic aluminum hockey shaft. I sheared and reinforced it myself. Oh wait, I think they called them sticks? Hockey sticks? Does that sound right? I was never much of a sports fan, I'm afraid. Bueno, whatever it is or was, it cost me a whole day's food ration. So, worth it though. It's light, strong, and easy to strap to my backpack. Perfect for the mission, don't you think? Yes, about the mission. Uh, 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 uh. Don't even say it. I'm not listening to this again. And before you even start, I understand the risks. I'm not entirely sure you do. Navigating yourself into the heart of a kill zone undetected? An absolutely attainable goal with your skill set. Not without its risks, perhaps, but with the proper precautions, it's reportedly accomplished on a daily basis all across this godforsaken wasteland. But that's not the end of it, is it? No. We're finding and subduing an aggressive robot, tapping into its communication diagnostic function, mapping and recording whatever sort of data that can somehow be turned around and repurposed into a workable language. The odds of that are, well, they're approximately 3,720 to 1. 3,720 to 1? Really? You're... Oh my god. You're absolutely right. I should just give up then. Wait. Yes. You absolutely should. 
I do say I'm actually speechless. Or, well, not actually speechless, as I'm currently communicating my genuine unfiltered pleasure. It's just that I thought, given similar conversations in the past, that it might be far more difficult to convey a sense of... That's because you didn't. Wow, Billy. All that bragging masked as astonishment. Great look, by the way. Will I ever learn? See how the human betrays my trust again. Even now, she belittles me for believing her. Oh, don't be salty. It's not like that. Or not exactly like that. You're still stuck, but come on. You got to see this. <sighs> I got it yesterday. Didn't even hit the auction for barter yet. Great condition. What a beauty. Please tell me you didn't trade all of your food away this time. No, I didn't have to trade all of my food away. Didn't have to trade anything this time, actually. On the house, Mel said. Is that what I think it is? Ooh, depends what you think it is, hotshot. It's the fuselage of an annihilator robot, isn't it? The one that humans commonly label as a flamingo due to the adjustable tendrils that act as its legs. Ding, 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 ding! And he's right! Oh, I love this. Anyway, Mel says a custom claymore they got from the war zone blew its legs off in a live action test. They took its weapons off right after from a distance, I bet. Yeah. Said they were just about to smash it with an ultra hammer before they remembered my little project. Took the time to pull the plug on it instead. Uh, a word of caution, Miss Ashley. It's possible that the machine could call for assistance upon reboot. Oh, I'm counting on it. Let it call for backup all day if it wants. We're way outside of any kill zone, and until they figure out how to get around that, we're home free. Besides, a distress call should be perfect for decoding their language. Am I right or am I right? Yes, it should. Ideally, I'd want to connect directly via hardwire, but I'm fearful that Omnitech may have security protocols that could scramble my civilian-rated systems. As much as I hate to admit it, my programming is akin to a toaster oven when compared to these military units. Okay. Quanto tiempo? How long do you need? If your theory on my capabilities in this regard is correct, not much more than a day of constant streaming. Two at most. Well, what are we waiting for then? Let's build a language, Billy! <laughs> I am so excited. I work best when I have someone to talk to. That's the way I like it. I love this job. Getting into things, figuring them out, pouring that love into what I'm working on. Mommy used to tell me that this ain't social hour bless her heart. I'm gonna tell you, being in a shop is no refuge from getting the chancla when you back talk a warning like that. She was a smart lady, though. Taught me what I know about being a mechanic. <laughs> she was wrong, though, about this work. To me, there's nothing better than hanging out with your friends, having a beer, and fixing something. Even better if I'm making something new. Engineering. Inventing. That's why my shit's good, right? I take my time on things that aren't urgent. Sure, they always say it's urgent, but when everything's urgent, nothing actually is. Another thing Mommy always said, they don't complain when they get their stuff back, though. Usually better than before it got busted. I put myself into it, and I work happy, so the machines are happy. Nah, well, maybe a bit spicy. <laughs> Which is why... Everything's fucked up right now. I can't concentrate because Billy's essentially offline. In it deep with that flamingo thing. So I've got nobody to bounce off of. Just me and this miserable, stupid hopper fight. Uh -oh, this is Ash. Shit's food bar Jones. Yep. Looks like we're going to have to get all up into her engine. Not looking forward to this, but no sense complaining about it either. I swear, if Jimbo thinks that a six-pack is going to cover this kind of roll up the sleeves, elbow deep into a dirty work, then he's ha <laughs> ha sadly fucking mistaken. Oh, you need her back, is that right? Maybe you 
you should have thought of that before giving the keys to some dumb kid who, <laughs> no surprise here, dumped her at the first spot of trouble? <sighs> what are you getting about it being foobar? Any normal mechanic would be stripping this thing for parts by now. You should thank me. Did I say that you should thank me? Yeah, fuck that. You should worship me when I get this thing up and running again. Don't forget, I won scrap this time, not New World Dollars. Robotics, electronics. If you really want to make me happy, you can find me an old utility bot. Huh. No, I'm asking for what I deserve. No more handouts to your crew. You hear me? Hijo de la gran puta es lo que es este. Well, that sounded awkward. Are you all right, Miss Ashley? Billy! Oh, thank God you're back. How, I'm afraid to ask, how did it go? Did you get everything you need? I think so. They communicate in a surprisingly primitive way once you bypass the antiquated encryption. Something that proved quite simple with the software you integrated into my programming. I am also pleased to report that preliminary tests on the damaged flamingo bore limited yet positive results. It's currently stuck in a sort of distress loop. But I was able to press it for some basic red light, green light style responses to simple inquiries. It seems to understand. Holy shit. Okay, okay. Let me shut this generator off and just think for a second. It's... <laughs> That's a breakthrough. We did it, didn't we? Finally figured out how to bridge the gap. <sighs> now we just have to test it in the field. That would be the next logical step, I suppose. It remains a rather dangerous prospect. Understanding that communication isn't control. We can't be sure they won't just open fire at the first possible chance. But I also understand that you can't go back now. That we're in this regardless of the possible outcome. Am I correct in this assessment? Ah, uh, you've got that right. Time to mount up and get into that kill zone. Woo! This is day one in the Arizona Kill Zone, Operation Flamingo Down. Or at least that's what we're calling it. I don't recall being included in the naming of this excursion, so unless you have a mouse in your pocket, Miss Ashley... Shh! Billy, we're recording! Wow. Anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted, this is already way more boring than I thought it was going to be. We're laying in an old military trench, covered by a tarp with my trusty signal-boosting dish sticking out. Hoping to jack a line to any patrolling bot in the area. And of course, no robots. Patience is a virtue, Miss Ashley. Surely a patrol is inevitable, if not imminent. Whatever, Mr. Vocabulary. Stop trying to sound smart for the recorder. Jesus. I... I don't remember what I was saying. Now, let's give a big ol' round of applause to my assistant, Billy, everyone! Yay! Woo! Wee! I do believe you had intended on explaining the purpose of Operation Flamingo down to the recorder. Likely breaking it down into scientific method, as per your usual procedure. Yes, that was it. Alright, so, as per scientific method, we start with a question. Can we establish meaningful communication with Omnitech robotic intelligence? We're out here because we've already completed extensive research and determined that these robots do communicate. So, as a hypothesis, we can assume that if we find a way to speak their language, there must be a way to bridge the gap. Now we need to find out if we can do so in a way that is meaningful or beneficial. So that brings us out here, sweating it out in Boringville, USA, under this tarp. By a carajo. Speak for yourself, Miss Ashley. Speak for yourself, Miss Ashley. Whatever, you no follicle having traffic light looking motherfucker. Traffic light? Why, I never. What was that? Ah, I hear it! Okay, let's go! I mean, let's go! It would seem to be a red tail, as you humans have dubbed it. A hunter killer in a more traditional designation. I recommend staying hidden. 
Affirmative. No time to screw around. You ready to broadcast, Poppy? As ready as I'll ever be. Transmitting now. All right. Signal's looking good. First test acknowledgement of communication request. It, it's acknowledged the signal. Really? Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> of course they did. We're going to go ahead and take a leap here. Establishing independence. Time to answer the question on whether these things are a hive mind or... Who knows? It would seem that the unit is confused by this particular line of inquiry. That said, I have determined that though the Red Tail seems to be acting independently, it queries a hub of sorts for its decisive reasoning. That's less than encouraging. Do you get the impression that it makes any decisions independently? I've now transmitted all the tests we pre-programmed with regard to testing the individuality of any individual unit, as well as queries to the Overmind. I regret to inform you that, by all appearances, these robots operate in the same way a trained animal might. Even worse, the intelligence it's pinging isn't much better. A reinforcement of directives and parameters which makes communication... Meaningless. The best we can hope for is maybe... Developing some new subterfuge methods? Which is a joke, because the old ones work just fine. Damn it. If we can't speak, then we won't find any kind of peace or working anything out. We'll just keep killing each other. Until the real end of the world. I'm sorry, Miss Ashley. I truly am. Shall we head on home? Yeah... Yeah, let's pop the crybaby and send this red tail on a chase first, I guess. Should be more than enough time to get our asses, whether actual or proverbial, out of here without straying the nest. We could perhaps try again. Closer to a factory. Yeah, maybe. Perhaps if we alter our metrics for success, aim for a different conclusion, a, a new hypothesis. Sure. But there are certainly other- There isn't, okay? Robots kill humans and zombies because that's what they're programmed to do. Humans in turn smoke robots and zombies because we don't know how to let go of the past and we're greedy as fuck. <sighs> Meanwhile, zombies still can't figure out that they can't eat loud noises. The cycle doesn't stop unless we can work past it. And we can't work past anything if we can't even communicate. You're right. We'll keep working. There must be a way. Yeah, a way to the saloon. Oh, no, not again. Uh-huh. Again. Drink your fill if you should find the need, but I'm begging you. Please, do not attempt to play the piano again. I'm begging, Miss Ashley. Miss Ashley. Are you listening to me? I'll take another, whatever that was. One Reggie's Blonde Bombshells coming up. I promise I did not come up with that name. Such low, low hanging fruit. What's the scoop anyway? I didn't think you worked here anymore. I don't. Eleanor called in a favor. Said they were short staffed, so here's Mel to the rescue, I guess. You know, if I knew back then that co-founding a saloon meant you were tied to the place for the entirety of your long-ass mutant life, I would have just got drunk at home, you know? It's been almost a hundred years. At least you left your mark, though, right? I suppose. Leaving a mark isn't what it used to be. Don't know if it ever meant anything at all. Maybe you should look at it this way. The world sucks, kid. You don't owe this ball of dust a damn thing. If you want to be known for anything, Try being the girl that lived a happy life. It's a pretty good legacy, if you ask me. It isn't about that. The fame or whatever. It's about the future. I thought if I could just, like, start the conversation with them, that we could all figure out a way to put down our weapons for a while. <laughs> That'd be a first. Everyone used to be able to speak to each other just fine in the old world. Still had every big country keeping enough ordnance on hand to destroy the world some 80 times over. Just to keep one another's fingers off the trigger. Wild. 
Yeah, but it isn't like that this time, or it wasn't supposed to be. They're robots, all logical and shit. Not like us. <laughs> God, I should have listened. To, uh, to everybody, I mean. They told me the story. <laughs> they told me the robots were stupid. I resent that remark. Not you. No. If anything, you were the reason I thought I had a shot. You might be grumpy and stubborn, but you're not stupid. No. When the bar is this low, I feel I need to take the compliments where I can get them. <laughs> she doesn't mean it, Bill. You're pretty swell for an old carburetor. I don't know why I feel this way. Like, if I don't do this, or find a way, we're somehow not going to find any change in human slash zombie slash robot relations in my lifetime. Never mind peace. It's not like it all hangs on my personal shoulders. Right? Now you're talking, girl. Fuck it. Let someone else take their shot. Ha! <laughs> you're right! You're absolutely right! Fuck it! Para pinga con todo esto! <laughs> Uh, one thing, though, before we fuck it or whatever, you said human-zombie-robot relations, right? Yeah, what about it? So you started with zombies before you moved on to robots, right? <laughs> Why would I do that? They're zombies. You, uh, know that they talk too, right? What? What do you mean? What, what do you mean they talk? Oh, <laughs> okay, let's roll this back a bit. They talk. It's mostly all, oh god, kill me, and I wish I was dead stuff, but they do talk. Man, I, you're shitting me. No, are you serious right now? Do you think I spent, like, 50 years on sentry duty popping zombies because it was fun? No fucking way. Those were mercy kills. How am I just hearing about this now? Probably because you spent all your time talking to inanimate objects and busted up tin cans. Uh, no offense, Bill. Oh no, please do go on. I thrive on your discrimination. Jumptown is for all of us, my non-existent derriere. Hey, I bet if you had an ass, it'd be spectacular. However, neither that ass nor you being a robot makes you immune to chirping. Chirping is for all of us. Exactly. But seriously, I know there aren't all that many of us mutants around, but yeah, all of us can hear them, I think. Huh. We've just been using the wrong receiver. It's so obvious. Billy could interpret robots. At some level, they use the same sort of programming language. And maybe mutants. Hey, hey, hey. Don't you say it. I'm just saying. The zombie strain or whatever it is, it's part of you. The same programming. Oh, for fuck's sake. I shouldn't have said anything. You know about Golden Gate, right? Yeah, it was a nightmare situation. About 50 years back, a zombie walked in and wiped out the whole community, they say. Jump-started a new wave of them and gave small settlements something new to worry about as zombie hordes started popping up all over the country. What of it? They say the Golden Gate zombies stayed put. That they're all still up there. Fucking creepy, they say. I get it. And the answer is no. Nope, not doing it, Ash. Come on, Mel, I need this. <laughs> Absolutely not. We are not going to Golden Gate. I'm going to convince you. I'm basically the best at convincing. She's not. Shut up, Billy. He's right. I find myself unconvinced. I'm also super persistent. Some say the most persistent. I mean, who else would have spent years trying to figure out a way to go out for proverbial coffee with killer robots when everyone else told her it was stupid? Huh. Besides, what are you doing these days? Going on patrol, filling in, and slinging beers at Reggie's? Which you should be thankful for. Oh, I am. It doesn't seem like it. Come on. You wouldn't have suggested it if you weren't a little curious. You are so fucking backwards about this. Yeah? I can figure this out. I know I can. <sighs> but I need you to do it. Whatever happened to fuck it? Fuck it to fuck it. Hello? I'm still here. An awkward third wheel yearning to be free of this obnoxious flirting. 
Uh, this isn't flirting. Obviously. Shut it, Billy. So, how's tomorrow? Leave for Golden Gate in the morning for field testing? Ugh, fine. Fine. Why not? Just, if it doesn't work... If it doesn't work and we get nothing at all from it, I'll try to move on. I swear it. On my mommy, even. Good enough for me. Now go. Get packing. Tomorrow we're leaving for Golden Gate. Well, listener, it's October, and Apocalypse is back on Halloween, and we hope that we've been able to keep you occupied between Flamingo Down and the sharing of some of our favorite shows through our feed drops. We're going to keep up with a few feed drops throughout the season as we feel there are more great shows out there that might be up your alley if you like our show, and I imagine you do since you're here. Out of respect, we just didn't want to hit you with them all at once. Too much of a good thing can be, well, too much. Hand Apocalypse has been brought to you by Red Fathom Entertainment and is a proud member of the Fable and Falling Network. This episode has been brought to you by the talents of our wonderful cast and crew, all of which can be found in the show notes as well as on our official webpage, www.redfathom.com slash Apocalypse. We'd love it if you'd stop by and fix us up with a follow on socials. You can find us on Twitter, as at Hanapoctical and on Instagram as Red Fathom. If you like what you hear so far and would like to support the show as well as other future productions like it, you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Red Fathom. Patreon is, of course, a service that allows you to pitch us a couple bucks on a monthly basis in exchange for some extra material and content. This includes early releases, behind-the-scenes info on all Red Fathom projects, and even a semi-monthly lore show where we deep dive into some world-building stuff. Every dollar goes into paying our talent and improving the show, helping us bring stories like this one out of post-apocalyptia and straight into your ear holes. Enough of that, though. Until next time, listener. <laughs>